every time I work on one of these stories uh, about university scandal, I always hope it'll be the last one that I'll have to write. But it's uh, it's always one of these topics where we keep getting sucked back in. It feels like no one is ever learning from their mistakes at the university level. Um, just really coming up with more creative ways of being deceptive, which... There are just a lot of it, ramifications of this kind of secrecy, not the least of which is that faculty gets hired initially with a foundation grant and then gets put into the regular rotation, gets tenure, maybe hired with tenure. So the taxpayers are on the hook for a long time and often very early actually in the process with no transparency at all about who these people are, why they may be qualified, et cetera. So, you know, academic faculty find this very disturbing too. That was one of the more, I guess, egregious examples that I found, but you know, it's all over the country as these other folks will tell you. And very few states have laws that really um, challenge the foundations and their relationship with the university. The strategy of narrow investigations um, combined with a rhetoric that said, hey, this is all in the past, we're moving forward now. That was a very ineffective strategy because you have great reporters on the ground posing very reasonable uh, questions that everybody's interested in as far as you know, athletic enrollment, what were the advisors saying, all this stuff. The university kind of putting up a, a wall, ultimately maybe being forced to do another investigation. It was this prolonged public interest that ultimately had the NCAA come in a second time, right? The great irony of this is that ultimately they would have to be so painfully transparent to get the scandal to come to a conclusion. They did one final investigative, uh, external investigative report, uh, you know, by way. Of, and, and what that report involved is that thousands upon thousands of emails finally got put up and, and just all these gory PowerPoint slides about making sure athletes didn't get uh, their papers graded by a professor. Ultimately, ultimately, they had to be transparent. It just took them uh, four years of, of being scandal ridden to finally to finally do it. So that was the great uh, irony here. I thought about this in, in the context of college sports and the investigative reporting that was primarily being done on the beat, which um, academic scandals aside and, and occasional stories about sexual misconduct involving um, athletics personnel, uh, really primarily comprised of busting programs for NCAA violations, impermissible benefits, players getting money under the table. And we collectively as journalists were, you know, putting a tremendous amount of our bandwidth and resources um, in, in reporting on something that, you know, uh, you know, I was not certainly the only person to have thought it uh, years ago, but seemed to have lost the plot. You know, what, what was the story? What was the public interest? And what interests were we actually serving through all this reporting? And so with that in the back of my mind, I thought, you know, as I came to see it, the scandal in college athletics and higher ed and and public life is is often right in front of our eyes 